My name is Robert O'Sullivan. Before I retired in Book Brookings in 2016, I was a high school social studies and English teacher, as well as a Lutheran pastor. Both the United States and Oregon constitutions protect the freedom of religion and the exercise thereof. Although the federal constitution's First Amendment is quite clear, ranking it with freedoms of speech, the press, assembly, and the redress of grievances, the Oregon Constitution gets very specific. No law shall in any case whatever control the free exercise and enjoyment of religious opinions or interfere with the rights of conscience. That's Article 1, Section 3. The previous section states that all people shall be secure in their natural right to worship Almighty God according to the dictates of their own consciences. Such protections and a clear federal statute approved unanimously by both houses of Congress in 2000, the year, has been flouted, scoffed at, and ignored by the City Council and Planning Committee Commission of Brookings, Oregon, in the city leadership's continued efforts to punish St. Timothy's Episcopal Church for operating as soup kitchen too often and providing ministries which some neighbors have complained attract undesirables to a neighborhood bordering a large public park, Azalea Park. This has prompted a federal lawsuit accusing the city of denying constitutional rights as well as violating the Religious Land Use and Incarcerated Persons Act. This all started when 30 signed an inflammatory petition to the city council complaining about hostile vagrants allegedly bringing criminal activities because a church with a long history of showing radical hospitality continued to provide frequent meals and a plethora of services to the needy. These stepped up during the COVID days as other churches cut meal programs and even the county health department was shut down by the state. While much was shut down, St. Timothy's became a welcoming place, offering COVID shots, meals, clothing, showers, and a plethora of ministries. In recent days, the city is threatening the church with a $720 a day fine through an abatement procedure designed for the removal of trash from properties. Planning Commission staff, clearly out of their bailiwick, misuse dictionaries to claim church buildings should only be used for worship. The council may not like what the law clearly requires, but they should continue, that they should not continue to be scoff laws forcing prolonged and costly litigation. On September 25th, the city council, whose mayor and two members face a recall election in early November, can reject a planning commission abatement order. Admitting a big mistake is better than continuing its consequences. The law is clear. Should taxpayer dollars be wasted in litigation proving what civic leaders should have known all along? Unless there is a compelling government interest that cannot be met by other means, cities have no right to tell churches how to exercise their faith. The term scoff law became popular during Prohibition to refer to those who preferred moonshine and speakeasies to obeying the law. Brookings voters will soon have an opportunity to throw three scoff laws out because they do not respect religious liberty and the practice thereof as the law of the land. They also have strange attitudes toward theft. Who knows? Someone might not like how you practice your faith. Do you want to be gone after? by government agencies for that.